Hi, I'm Darren Kaplan from the Canacribs Horticultural Consulting Team. And today we're here to share some concepts that we discuss and implement to help commercial cannabis growers operate as efficiently and successfully as possible. Understanding what's going on in your growing media, in the root zone, is everything when you're a cultivator. It can inform your irrigation decisions, fertilizer rates, and a lot more. Two very important parameters in the root zone are the EC, or electrical conductivity, and the pH. There's different ways to measure the EC and pH in your root zone, but one of the easiest and most practical when your plants are actually growing is called the pour-through method. The pour-through method involves first fully irrigating your plants, so irrigating your plants with whatever fertilizer you're applying at the time with complete saturation until regular runoff. Then you wait 30 minutes to two hours. Once the nutrient solution in your growing media has come to an equilibrium, it's time to displace some of that liquid and collect a small sample. We're looking to collect about 50 to 100 milliliters of solution and it's really important that you're not getting too much more solution or too little because then you start diluting the sample. We're going to be pouring increments of fertilizer solution, the same thing that you've been feeding the plants with, in increments of 100 milliliters for this size pot. This is a 2.2 gallon pot. If you're working with a smaller pot, you'll be using smaller increments, maybe half the volume. So here I have 100 milliliters of solution. So I'm gonna be pouring increments of 100 milliliters of water evenly over the substrate surface uh, so that you are pushing water through the growing media and out of the bottom in an equal way from all different parts of the growing media all, through, all throughout the pot. I'm doing 100 milliliters and then I'm gonna wait two to five minutes in between increments. What I'm looking for on the tray underneath, um, underneath the growing media I'm waiting to see when we get about 50 to 100 mils. So it, it does take time sometimes, and it depends how evenly the substrate has been irrigated previously. You might have to do five or six increments of the 100 mils. Ideally, you know, you're just doing two or three, but it's really important that you're only getting, you know, within that range of 50 to 100 mils, and you're not overly diluting the sample by putting too much water into the growing media. You'll see I have the pot placed on in a saucer on top of a stand. So that allows the water to flow through the pot into the saucer, but not get sucked back up into the pot. So I'll wait here for about two to five minutes more, and then get ready for my next increment. I have two jugs here. I have one larger one filled with uh, fertilizer solution, and then I have a smaller one for actually pouring the water. Every time I wanna make a 100 mil increment, I'll pour it here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it can be close and then I'm ready to pour again. So now about five minutes has passed. I'm going to do another increment, again as evenly as possible over the growing media, and then we wait. There are slightly different ways of, of performing this method. Uh, North Carolina State University uh, was first to kind of come up with it, and so I would follow their recommendations. As long as you're doing it consistently from crop to crop and between crops, that's the most important because what you're looking for is tracking change over time. Pour-throughs are a very useful part of a nutrient monitoring program. You'll see over time how the EC and the pH in your growing media changes, and you can adjust the fertilizer rate and the pH of that solution as you water. You can set targets for what you'd like to see in the growing media, for what the plant's actually receiving, and then you can use these measurements to keep those targets on track. Instead of making decisions based on what you're feeding, so the, feeds, the feed pH in EC is much less important compared to actually what the plant is receiving, which is the root zone pH, and that's what we're measuring here. We're actually displacing water that's in the root zone by only applying it from the top, and what we're looking for is that none of the water that we're actually putting in here is coming out the bottom. The only water that we're measuring is water that's already in the root zone, that's already come to an equilibrium after that 30 minutes to two hours, and that's very indicative of actually what's happening in the root zone. Okay, you want to be careful not to spill any water from this container into the saucer because that'll give some, uh, that'll cause issues with your readings. One thing you can do is when you're, when you're doing pour-throughs, you're not just measuring one plant throughout the crop. Typically, you recommend to get a uh, representative sample size. So depending on the size of the bench, for example, a bench like this, maybe we would do three or four plants. And you can come and do one uh, aliquot, one uh, treatment of water, go to another one, do another, and then keep coming back to check. And it's, much more, it's a much more efficient use of your time instead of constantly working on one plant. You'll find that if you're using drippers 
and you're uh, and you're doing pour throughs that the top surface of the growing media has not held moisture in quite a while. Most of the water actually ends up uh, underneath the surface of the growing media, so it might take several several applications of water to get that first runoff. But then once it does come through, it uh, comes through quick. So, oh, okay, we start. We're having some water uh, pour through now, and I am going to wait until we have about 50 milliliters. A shot glass is a great tool for collecting the solutions. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare my EC and pH pens. I've calibrated these in advance. Uh, you should be calibrating them regularly and doing a ve uh, verification on the EC and pH uh, regularly as well to ensure that your, your readings are accurate. Between pour through tests, it's really important to clean your saucers, your pot risers, your containers, uh, clean your pH probes. Everything should be completely cleaned with uh, with distilled or reverse osmosis water so that you're not uh, causing any influence on your results. I think we are now at a point where we can test the sample. It's okay to come back, but I'm gonna put the plant aside. Saucer side. You can see here, we really don't need a lot of water in the saucer to, uh, to get an accurate sample. I'm gonna pour it in. You wanna carefully pour it into your um, measurement vessel. So here I got, this, this is about a one ounce yeah, this is a one ounce container. So I've got about 40 milliliters here and there's a little bit left in the saucer. So that's a good, uh, that's a good size sample. You can use the same sample for both EC and pH. That's not a problem. I'll start here with conductivity, with electrical conductivity, moving, moving the pen in the solution until it stabilizes. And it looks like we have an EC of 4.1. You can use the same solution for pH and keep that moving until it stabilizes and we have a pH of 6.0. Both of those are, are reasonable values. Keep track of these values week by week for the individual crop. You can use the same plants over and over, that's completely fine. Uh, and you can track how EC and pH are changing over time. This is one of the best ways to, uh, to dial in your irrigation strategy because it is based on what is actually happening in the growing media and you're managing that root zone instead of making decisions based on what you're applying in your fertilizer and what you're seeing in the bulk runoff that you might see coming from the tray. The issue with using runoff from the tray that, coll that is collected from the mass of plants is that you have very little control over how dilute it is. If you overwater, then you might get you know, a 20% uh, 20 leaching fraction from your pots, which will be much more representative of what you're actually putting into the plant compared to what's in the root zone. This method is quite representative of what's happening in the root zone and what your plant is actually perceiving. So that's the pour through method. If you have any questions about that or other methods to manage your irrigation strategies, your fertilizer strategies, you can reach out to Canna Cribs Consulting through the type form in the comments box below.